which is gone 11 minutes past nine as we continue with our broadcast news and views this morning right here on Salah Media. If you have just tuned in, we welcome you, our listeners, our viewers on the various platforms of Salah Media. Now, what we can expect uh, in the next uh, hour or so, uh, we will be talking shortly with uh, Dr. Iqbal Survey, uh, talking about the Financial Intelligence Center, the High Court ruling, uh, and uh, also taking a look uh, later on at CADA deployment in South Africa. Now that we know the DA took the matter to court in terms of uh, wanting this policy declared unconstitutional. And uh, also another interesting case, the South African cystic fibrosis community urged to take the leap and join this David versus Goliath fight against a big a farmer. All of that to come on the show from now right until 10 a.m. But right now, are uh, we going across uh, to be joined by the uh, chairman of uh, Sikunjalo, uh, the CEO? We're talking with uh, Dr. Iqbal Survey. Dr. Iqbal, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome. Uh, wa alaikum salam, Inayat, and uh, thank you so much for having me on your show this morning. Yes, uh, wonderfully able to join us. Now, clearly, this uh, the Cape High Court uh, ruling uh, is uh, most welcomed by you and by Sekunjalo. But uh, just before we get to the actual ruling, uh, I just want to take a step back and just some background with regard to political interference and the fact that banks were actually ordered to shut down your accounts. That is correct. You know, as you know, about a month ago, we sued the presidency and a number of organs of state for 75 billion rand uh, due to the fact that you know we have evidence that uh, first of all they led a smear campaign against our group used state institutions against our group but more importantly that they instructed the banks to shut down the accounts of the second jala group so that you know the group could no longer operate it could no longer have a media business and it could no longer have a say, you know, in the economy of South Africa. Yes. And uh, just uh, obviously they cited reasons being reputational risk. Now, what was that all about? Well, what had happened, you know, which is in our papers against the presidency, against Ramaphosa, is that uh, they established the party commission. And the Empathy Commission never made any adverse finding against us. What it, in fact, did do is made certain inferences and suggested that it be investigated. But that was used very cleverly by the other media, the likes of News24, Arena, at, um, Daily Maverick and others, to create the impression of wrongdoing. So we have taken the Empathy Commission on review and uh, despite that, the government has, has not um, allowed us to take the matter on review. They've delayed the matter, as the banks have, for instance. So what the banks are saying, just to be very clear, the banks in writing tell us you have done nothing wrong. In writing, by the way, we can release those letters. Uh, they say you've never been involved in corruption, never been involved in money laundering. But because, you know, there's been so much written about you and your group, uh, it's a reputational risk for the bank. Now, of course, that is laughable. That's just the reason that they give to, to cover the fact that they, the CEOs of the banks, have been instructed by the likes of Ramaphosa and Pravin Gordon to shut our accounts. Yes. Dr. Iqbal, how has this all affected Sekunjalo and your subsidiaries? It has affected us in a number of ways. Uh, in the first instance, you know, we are one of only about 20 South African companies that are World Economic Forum members, and we've been there since 2007, Davos attendees, and the only two black businesses in South Africa that qualify in terms of size is Secunjalo and Patrice Motsepe's group. Now, um, we've suffered firstly economically damages of about 75 billion, and that's the, the lawsuit we, we, you know, we, we, we filed against the government about a few weeks ago. Secondly, it's been very demoralizing for our employees. Thirdly, you know, it's cost us businesses in terms of customers. It's cost us businesses in terms of suppliers. Uh, you know, we have 8,500 employees, 40,000 dependents. For the first time ever in our 20-odd years, we've had to retrench people, which is very sad because people are very committed to our group. But... It's been a very costly affair at a group level, at a personal level, you know, for myself, for my family, for the employees uh, of our organization, and, and frankly, for, for, you know, for black people in the country, because 
I think arguably we're probably one of you know the most successful black uh, enterprises in South Africa. We started with nothing. You know, we built up a business of 120 billion. And um, it's very sad to see that this is a black government, an ANC government in particular. Uh, but we know, of course, that this directive to them, to Ramaphosa and Pravin, is coming from the likes of, uh, uh, in the first instance, you know, the Oppenheimers, who see us as a threat in terms of our resources, the Afrikaners, such as the Ruperts, um, uh, the Kursbeckers and others. And, of course, there's a very strong Jewish uh, grouping that has, um, you know, organized against us. Uh, so it's the same grouping that was there before apartheid, uh, which is now very determined to take control of South Africa. And Ramaphosa is their proxy, you know, along with the DA to achieve that objective. Well, in fact, you know, what you are saying is very, very true, because just the other day we were looking at political party funding as well, and where are all the funding is actually coming from as well. And uh, this is the reason why we speak about political interference. But also, just generally, there's been so much talk about white, mono white monopoly capital that is uh, impacting and influencing government and its decisions in more ways than one. And this is exactly, uh, you know, what you are saying and what you're alluding to, uh, Dr. Iqbal. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Look, I mean, we we it's well known that despite the fact that we are a large corporation, you know, we funded projects, we funded people that are, I would say, you know, human rights um, uh, sort of aligned. Um, we are community driven. Uh, you know, we are largely black. Ninety percent of our structure is black. Um, you know, and it's. Um, it's something which, frankly speaking, the establishment, in particular, the white conglomerates fear. And the white conglomerates, you know, always control South Africa, the Oppenheimers, the Ruperts, the Herzogs, the Manels. And what they want to do now, with the help of a few other families, is, is now in um, 30 years post our democracy, is want to take back control. Now, we are the only black group that owns a, you know, uh, a very significant large media house that we control fully. We have not had debt to any bank for 12 years, and that upsets the banks a lot. You know, we've only had billions in our bank accounts due to the efficiency of our businesses. Our businesses themselves, whether it is e-commerce, telecommunications, technology companies, food and fishing, we compete head on with the big white companies in South Africa today and internationally. So, and of course, in the media space as well. So, you know, I was a target since Ramaphosa came into office, as we say in our court papers against him, in our Section 3 notice against him. Uh, I have been a, I've become a target, and Second Jal has become a target of this administration uh, because they fear us. They fear, you know, we reach about almost 10 million people every day, you know, through our print and online uh, uh, media businesses, our various media assets. Uh, we have an alternative voice. We, we we represent an alternative voice. We were the first to expose the Palapala scandal, the PPE corruption. Uh, we were first to expose um, a whole lot of things which this government has done wrong. So, yeah. of course, pains me as someone that, you know, has come out of the ANC, someone that was an activist during the apartheid years. I was affectionately called the struggle doctor. It pains me that my, you know, my dear old comrades and friends of the past have really, you know, made South Africa uh, a place which is not, uh, you know, able to reach its potential to take people out of poverty to create a more equal society. And we are fighting for that. And the establishment doesn't want us to do that. Dr. Iqbal, you also make this point in terms of uh, the uh, threats to close your account and the closure of the account uh, is based on uh, objective evidence. Uh, sorry, uh, not based on objective evidence, rather on subjective evidence. And I think this is important for us to understand because, again, in terms of how reputational risk is actually selectively applied, and you make that point very, very strongly, where you look at how it's been applied to Secunjalo, but you've got other disgraced companies. We know what the Zondo Commission had revealed, companies like Tongard, Steinoff, and they continue to enjoy banking services. I think what you're saying is so important in it. In the first instance, we must say for a fact that we have done nothing wrong ever. This is a smear campaign. And in fact, the banks themselves acknowledge 
that we have done nothing wrong, that I have done nothing wrong, that Second Jala has done nothing wrong. If we had done something wrong by now, five years later into this fight, they would have arrested us or charged us or something. The fact is they can't because we've always operated with absolute integrity. But let's for argument's sake say there is a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, evidence, if you like, or whatever. On the other hand, you have got 30 to 40 white companies that have actually committed fraud of 300 billion together. They, they have admitted to the fraud themselves, whether it's McKenzie, KPMG, SAP, um, Steinoff, EOH, Tonga Hewlett, etc. All of these white companies and many, many more, uh, including many white fraudsters, they are all currently banked by all of the big five banks in this country. None of the accounts have been closed. So therefore, on that basis alone, we went to the Equality Court and we said to the Equality Court, our constitutional rights are being challenged here and um, we are being discriminated against. And therefore, we took all the banks to the Equality Court. Now, that's on the basis of discrimination because the truth of the matter is a company like EOH they admit they stole billions from the government. They admit this. And yet, you know, and that's a huge reputational thing. Certain ministers were implicated in being bribed by EOH Ramaphosa government ministers. But by the way, the banks themselves are guilty of corruption. If you look at the latest Al Jazeera series, you know, what will happen there with Standard Bank and all the others, etc. So at the end of the day, we've done nothing wrong. So when we speak to privately and off the record to the senior executives of the banks, they tell us, look, Dr. Survey, we would love to have you as a customer. You are, you know, your, your revenues are in the tens of billions. Uh, you know, you have lots of money with the banks. But the political instruction to us is that we have to shut your accounts because as the politicians have told us, you know, you've gone rogue. And so what do they mean by that? Well, they mean I fund causes which um, the establishment doesn't want to fund, human rights causes, you know, causes for, um, uh, as you know, you know, to support the victims of impunity, like in the Middle East and other places, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, I, you know, we spent $100 million over the last couple of years supporting various initiatives, um, which are, which one would describe as funding alternative voices in our country today. Um, and on the African continent, etc. The establishment doesn't want that. They want to have a uni. If they could, you know, if it's going to happen to me, Nayat, tomorrow they'll shut down Salam Media. They will use the same tactic. Mm -hmm. They will say, well, you know, it's a reputational damage. Now, the very fact that the banks can make an arbitrary decision with no objective evidence to shut down anybody's bank account any company's bank account, any trust bank account is absolutely mad and goes against the very essence of our constitution. And it's important for you to know and your, and your listeners to know, and your, your, you know, your viewers to know, the banks don't want to go to the equality court. They are using every trick in the book to delay the day in the equality court. Because when we get to the equality court, we're going to call the CEOs of the banks to come into the witness box and cross-examine them. Now, as an example, we took the banks and the FIC to court. The reason is, we said to the banks and the FIC, look, you, we are 200 companies. Now, we can tell you we operate our business with integrity. Maybe you know something we don't know. So let's assume you know something we don't know. It means that you would have had meetings, you would have had minutes, you would have had reports, which shows there was something wrong in any of our 200 companies. So please provide us with that information. They refuse point blank to provide us with any information because they don't have that information. Subsequent to that, we then took them to court. And the court said to them, scolded out, scolded the FIC and the banks and said to them, listen, 
You can't close someone's account and say you don't have any minutes, you don't have risk committee meetings, uh, you don't have any reports. So on what basis did you close the accounts? And so that was the basis that the FIC now has been forced by the Western Cape High Court to hand over any documents that it may have. So we are looking forward to receiving these documents, but we know there are no such documents because, because all of this is a political instruction. In fact, this is uh, this was going to be my leading question, actually, and you've just answered it partly, Dr. Iqbal, in terms of uh, these documents and what could be contained in those documents. But it, what's also relevant uh, in this particular matter is uh, the FIC has been ordered to actually pay the cost as well. So there is a cost order that has been issued, and that, uh, you know, obviously is quite pleasing to you as well and the group as a whole. You know, it is pleasing, but what these banks do in order to delay, because remember, the, this is not the main case. The main case must still be heard, and they're preventing, they're using every single delay tactic to have the main case being heard. So these are what we call interlocutory applications, interdicts, etc. So the banks are fighting us at these levels. You know, to date, night, we have spent almost 400 million on legal fees fighting the banks. The banks are very powerful. I mean, they the banks combined have assets of more than five trillion. So their strategy is to deplete our financial resources. Their strategy is to tire us out. Their strategy is to to lock us into these um, you know uh, interlocutory applications, into these interdicts, so that we never ever get to the main court case. And ultimately, their strategy is to get a short-term ruling from the SEA or wherever else to shut the accounts so that by the time we do get to the Equality Court, we are substantially weakened as a group. Of course, at the huge cost of our employees. Well, certainly. But uh, as we say, you know, at this point in time, uh, this is obviously a victory, uh, although it is interim and, uh, you know, in the short term. But uh, Dr. Survey, uh, we thank you. We say shukran to you for taking time out uh, and uh, talking to us this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honor that uh, you've taken time out of your busy schedule, uh, uh, unpacking what you have with us and the uh, ruling that was made by the uh, Cape Town High Court. Naya, thank you so much and thank you for having me on the program and all the best to, uh, to Salaam Media and Salaam Alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa to Dr. Iqbal Survey, uh, the CEO of the Sekunjalo Group with us this morning against uh, the Cape Town High Court ruling uh, ordering the FIC to hand over documents and also at the same time uh, issuing a cost order. But we certainly will continue following developments and uh, as we have done in the past as well. And from time to time, we will provide you with regular updates. Uh, with that, we're going to go for a break. We come back and uh, we still have got a lot more to unpack uh, on the show this morning, uh, taking a look at Kader Debel. Uh, deployment in South Africa where the DA had wanted this policy declared unconstitutional.